For this code, we will need three variables. We need two for the numbers we will collect from the user and another one to collect the choice they make. Remember, they have the option of adding, subtracting, dividing, or multiplying the numbers together. In order to create a menu, a simple print statement will be used. We will use the numbers 1 through 4 to indicate to the user the number of options they have or what they can choose. Okay, so for this program, we want the user to have the choice of choosing as many options as they want from the menu. We want them to essentially use the program until they decide to stop. To implement this, we will use a loop, specifically a do while loop. Do while loops are great for input validation because it allows you to perform post check validation. A do while loop is essentially a while loop, but the trick is the condition in the do clause is always executed at least once even before the condition is checked in the while statement. It's not until after the first iteration that the condition is checked basically deciding if the loop should keep on going or stop. So in our do clause, we will implement the choice the user has and then implement a way for them to stop the loop. In this case, if the user enters a 99, the loop will terminate and the program will spit out an output statement and stop. Anything other than that will cause the loop to run again. In addition to that, we can perform a little bit of input validation. If the numbers 1, 2, 3, or 4 is not entered, we want the user to know that whatever he or she entered is not an acceptable choice and they need to alter their input accordingly. And finally, in order to implement the choice system, instead of using a bunch of if statements, what we can do is use a switch statement. If you do not understand what switch statements are, do not worry. I made a video on this topic a while back and I'll put the link in the description down below so you can check it out. So I suggest you pause this video and check it out, basically familiarizing yourself with the concept before continuing with this video. After we implement the switch case, then our program is done. Okay, similar to other programs, we will be solving this problem with a function. The reason we will be transitioning to solving a lot of problems with functions is that it helps us reuse it in other programs. You can use it as many times as you want by just copying and pasting it into your programs. Of course, you will have to adapt it to your application or program, but when you do, you can use it as many times as you want and in anywhere in your code. So to begin, we will create a function called reverse num. The function will take in an integer and return an integer. The integer it takes in will be the original number and the one it returns will be the length of that number. So to begin, I will initialize a variable for the length of the number, then use a while loop to start the reversing process. Because again, since the size of the actual number may vary, a while loop is the best way to perform this application. We will set the condition to be while number is greater than zero because we will essentially be going through the entire number and printing every digit it has, but in the reverse order. In order to reverse the order of the number, you start from right to left or start from the last digit of the number. If you remember from our previous video, in order to get the last digit of an integer number, we modded the number by 10. That is exactly what we will do. What we will do is print out the number modded by 10 and get rid of the last digit by dividing the same number by 10. Watch my last video if you do not understand this process. So as an example, this is what we expect to happen. When we receive a number such as 1, 2, 3, 4, we will print out the last digit, in this case 4, and then divide the same number 1, 2, 3, 4 by 10, giving us 1, 2, 3. Go through the entire process again, this time, printing out 3 and then dividing 1 to 3 by 10, which gives us 12. This will go on until the number reaches 0, then the loop will stop. So at the end, we would have printed out 4, 3, 2, 1. 
So while this process is going on, we can add an increment for the length of the number itself and then return that at the end of the function. So essentially, the function does two things. The function will return the length of the number as well as print it in reverse order. Printing the number is considered a side effect of the function since its main purpose is to return the length of the number. This idea can be seen in the scanf function as mentioned in the previous video. The function also returns the number of successful passes in addition to assigning the values into the appropriate variables. Now, if we want the function to just return the reverse number itself instead of printing it out, this is what we have to do. First, we must include a variable which allows us to store the reversed number. We can call it reverse num. In this case, we can actually delete the length variable since we wouldn't need it anymore. Secondly, we will store the last digit in there by adding it to the empty variable. Remember, we initialize it to be 0. The next thing we want to do is multiply the number by 10 and then return reverse num divided by 10. Instead of explaining what the point of multiplying the variable by 10 and returning reverse num divided by 10 all mean, I think it's best if you run the process through an example. So if the number inputted into the function is 1234, after the first line of code, reverse num will hold the number 4 because num, which is 1234, modded by 10 gives us 4, which then added to 0 gives us 4. Next, we will divide number by 10. With integer division, 1234 divided by 10 gives us 123. Remember that reverse num holds 4. By multiplying reverse num by 10, we are essentially increasing the order of the number from 1 to 10 to help us build or create a reverse number. In other words, multiplying by 10 allow us to create a space in the ones place so we can always add the next digit to the reverse number variable without changing the one we already added. If you still don't understand, let us finish our example. Maybe it will give you some insight. So in our case, 4 becomes 40. And then after another iteration in the loop, 40 becomes 43. So 1, 2, 3 modded by 10 is 3. 3 plus 40 gives us 43. If we go through the loop, 43 becomes 430, and then 432. This will continue until num reaches 0, and then the loop will stop. In our case, after the loop is done, we will get a value of 43210 because of the way our function is structured. What we need to do is just return the value divided by 10 which will just get rid of the zero. And then that is it. This function will return the reversed order of the number as an integer rather than printing it out like in the first part of the video. So to recap, we found a way to find the length of an integer value and then found a way to return the reverse order of the same number with a function. We also learned that depending on your application, you can also change the way your function is structured to suit your needs. If this video helped you in any way, please consider giving it a like and commenting as it helps me reach more people and help my channel grow. Thank you for your support and I will see you on the next video. Thank you. Before we begin, let us discuss how to convert a binary number to a decimal number. And luckily, a quick search on Google will give us the equation on how to convert a binary number to a decimal number. Looking at this equation, essentially what you want to do is start from left to right. As shown in the figure, you take the rightmost digit of the binary number, in this case 1, and multiply it by 2 to the power of 0. In this case, we will get 1 times 2 to the power of 0 which is also 1, so 1 times 1 is 1. Then you move on to the next binary digit, but this time multiply it by 2 to the first power. 2 to the first power is 2, multiplied by 1 
which gives us 2. You keep doing that until you run through the entire binary number and then you add the numbers up together. After that, you are done converting the binary number to a decimal number. Okay, good. Now that we understand how the equation works, we will implement it with code. By now, if you have been watching my videos, I'm sure you are familiar with how to set up your main function and how to declare variables to help you solve your code. What we will do for this code is create a function to help us with the problem. If you need a refresher on functions, I will link a video I made a while back in the description below. So I suggest you take a look at it before finishing this one. Our function will take a binary number as an integer and return an integer, or in this case, a decimal number. In this function, we will declare two integers. First, one to use as an iterator for our position on the binary number, and the next one to store our decimal number that we will calculate with this function. Remember that with the decimal conversion, we are starting with a two to the zero power, and then two to the first power, and then two to the second power, and so on until the end of the binary number is reached. That is what the int i will help us do. To perform the calculation, we will use a while loop because we don't know how big of a binary number we will get. So essentially, we do not know when we will need to stop iterating the int number variable. So what we will do is take the rightmost digit from the binary number. This is done by modding the entire number by 10. By the way, this is, this is how you return the last rightmost digit of any integer number. So keep that in mind. After that, we will multiply it with 2 to the i power. We initialize i and dec to be 0. So at this point in the loop, i is 0. So it will be 2 to the 0 power multiplied by the rightmost number and the result is added to int dec. int dec at this point is also 0. So we will just be adding the value of our calculation into an empty variable. After we do that, we want to get rid of the rightmost digit. What we can do is divide the number by 10. Because of integer division, the rightmost digit is dropped and we can just replace the old number with the new one. Remember, a variable is just a space that holds information, so we can definitely do this. Also, we can shortcut this method by writing the code like this. Okay, after that, we need to iterate the integer i. This loop will run as long as we have more numbers to check. And we are sure it will not be an infinite loop because of the line of this line of code. This line of code keeps on reducing the number until the condition has been met. Finally, we would want to return the decimal number. And by that, the function is complete. We can test our function in the main function with just a few prompts. And there you go. I hope you learned something new and if this video gave you um, any value, please consider liking the video as it helps me reach more people. Thank you.